I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. All right, so there was a big interview yesterday with this Emily Corris, who was a forewoman of the uh, the grand jury down there with Fannie Willis uh, in, uh, in, in Atlanta on the whole issue about Donald Trump's t telephone call to Brad Raffsenberger, can you find me 11,780 more votes? And a lot of people were in view. Like Lindsey Graham was viewed, uh, Mark Meadows and uh, Giuliani. Uh, but she's a forewoman, Right. So she, I think, spoke to the Associate Press, uh, uh, the MSNBC, and New York Times interview yesterday indicating that, according to, she'd been a forewoman, but there are certain things that she's restricted from saying because, you know, there are laws once you become a, you can't just, uh, but I think what she was indicating is that if Trump is going to get indicted down in Georgia, and all the liberals were jumping up and down like a bunch of cats on a hot tin roof. And she just kept indicating that Trump is going to get indicted. Trump is going to get indicted. She didn't say that, but she intimated it. So I'll tell you what, I'll let you listen to that. This is an MSNBC Blanche, somebody who interviewed her the other yesterday. Yeah, just yesterday. She's a young girl. She's about a young woman. She's 36 years old. And, uh, you know, she looks a little, I don't know what to say about it. She sounds a little off chain to me. But anyway, go ahead. Roll this. Take a look at this, everybody. And so we're talking about multiple people. Yes. How long, how multiple. many people was this a long list? It's not a short list. So we're talking about more than a dozen people? I would say that, yes. Okay. Are these recognizable names, names that people would know? There are certainly names that you would recognize, yes. There are names also that you might not recognize, or there are names that like you might recognize as someone who's followed this case, but then, you know, your mother might not recognize because she doesn't care about the intricacies of the case. Um, but there definitely are some names that you expect. Did the grand jury recommend an indictment of former President Trump? I'm not going to speak on exact indictments. Would we be surprised? Are there bombshells of who is I being don't recommended think, for indictment? I don't think that there are any giant plot twists coming. I don't think that there are any like giant. That's not the way I expected this to go at all. Mm. I, I don't think that's. Oh, hold on, right there, in store. I think that. I, I mean, a lot of people are uh, inter inter interpreting what she is saying is that Trump is going to be indicted, and they're all jumping up and down. The liberals—they are all having parties. Like, I mean, they're having cocaine parties. Just from this one interview, that they think that Trump's going to be indicted. You know, uh, maybe I'm misreading. Maybe her demeanor is so confusing. She's, you know, like a valley girl or something like that. It's probably turning me off. Uh, and so I'm not able to read her correctly. I, I'm not necessarily reading that Trump's going to be indicted. You know, or that, it rec that the grand jury recommended that Trump get indicted. I think that's what this grand jury, this grand jury does not indict. It recommends indictments. But, you know, her valley girl demeanor kind of like throws me off. But the liberals are having cocaine parties like you won't believe. They've been bought up more champagne than drizzly than you can shake a stick at. I shouldn't give drizzly any, any play right here today. But, um, it's, right, go ahead, Ms. Let's listen to the rest of her. She's a little valley girl, if you ask me. Or for anyone. So nothing that would surprise people who have been following this. Uh, probably not. Um, I wouldn't want to characterize anyone else's reaction, of course, but so that was when we heard a lot in testimony. Um, but probably not. It probably wouldn't shock you. I would not expect you to be too shocked. No. And that includes of the former president, potentially. Potentially. It might. I think that... There were a lot of people that we could have subpoenaed, and there are a lot of people that we honestly, like, might have subpoenaed, but there was also, I don't know, partially the time factor. Mm. Like, if we had subpoenaed everyone who had potentially something to say about this, we would probably be there for two years. You know what I mean? Like, there are just so many people involved. And I think at some point through this investigation, especially as we began to speak to higher profile witnesses, um, I think 
some of the combativeness that we experienced um, meant that the DA's team, as well as us, kind of started to pick our battles. And when someone, like for example, goes before the January 6th committee and says they plead the fifth 200 times, do you really you know, expect I, them to I, come? I'm, I'm, I'm broadcasting this myself, uh, but I, I think we're our major network. I don't know if I would have carried her. Uh, the it, 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 her demeanor tends to cheapen the authenticity or the originality or the sacredness of the grand jury process. I mean, if this is the person who's the foreman of the grand, what the hell are the rest of the people on there like? And you know, not that youth can be a scourge in this regard, but the way she's conducting herself, I don't know if she is seasoned enough to make decisions about whether the former president of the United States of America should be indicted or not, or whether Mark Meadows should be indicted or Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham should have been indicted and put in jail a thousand years ago, if you ask me. But, I mean, something about this doesn't feel right to me. Uh, and even though I'm broadcasting myself, I'm broadcast, broadcasting it to show the lunacy of it, but I tell you, the liberals, they were all over everywhere. Yeah. I mean, this story outplayed Joe Biden over there in Poland and, and, and the Ukraine. They took that off the air. I mean, Joe Biden and, you, and you Kiev went over there with Zelensky and then, then Poland talking about Russia and China and Xi Jinping. And they just took this off the air. Bam, that went by way of the cut flower. And all of a sudden, this woman was everywhere in the liberal media media. I mean, she was everywhere. But it seems to cheapen our sense of the sacredness of the grand jury and who gets hauled before a judge for very serious crimes. I'm going to let you listen to a little bit more of that. Maybe you feel like, maybe you have a little bit, maybe you think I'm, you know, a bit, you know, prejudice about the whole, they're not racially prejudiced, but there's prejudice in terms of that she's a young woman and perhaps I think there's a better demeanor that could be displayed. But go ahead, Miss Engineer, go ahead. Let's let a little bit more of this and I got to let this woman go. For you and say something different. You know what I mean? And so it became a battle we didn't need to fight when we could fight other battles and make way with those. Sure. Did you personally want to hear from the former president? I wanted to hear from the former president, but honestly, I kind of wanted to subpoena the former president because I got to swear everybody in. Mm. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get 60 seconds with President Trump of me looking at him and being like, do you solemnly swear? And me getting to swear him in? I just, I kind of just thought that, that would I mean, be an awesome I mean, moment. I mean, I mean, you know, that would be unnatural. I, you know, Obviously, she likes the she likes Trump. She admires him. She she ought to be a moment with the Beatles or something, getting off the air for in 1964, getting off the plane in Yankee Stadium. But getting off the LaGuardia Air, but wherever they got off the plane at, I want to be right there. See, I've, I've all the eyeball and look him in the eye and, and say, hey, "Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth?" Now that would have been a question for Trump. He may say, "Wait a minute, now, will you promise to go out with me anyway?" So here the. Uh, you know, so it seems to me that she got a, you know, she got a crush on Trump. What do you think? I don't know. I've asked engineer you know, just back it up just a little bit, you know, just back it up just a tad. Seems to me she admires him. I mean, nothing wrong if she does. Go ahead and admire Trump. A whole lot of folk admire Trump. Stormy Daniels did. Well, I don't know about Stormy Daniels. But, uh, and I'm not trying to down Trump. I'm just saying, is this the level of grand, is this what Fannie Willis is dealing with down there in Georgia? One more time, I sent you there about her. And, and calling Trump. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't called to testify, but just one more time. We expect them to come before you and say something different. You know what I mean? And so it became a battle we didn't need to fight when we could fight other battles and make way with those. Sure. Did you personally want to hear from the former president? I presidents? wanted to hear from the former president, but honestly, I kind of wanted to subpoena the former president because I got to swear everybody in. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get 60 seconds with President Trump of me looking at him and being like, do you solemnly swear? And me getting to swear him in? I just, I kind of just thought that it. would be an awesome moment. I can see how trying to get the former president to come talk to us would have been a year in right, okay, negotiation. Right, enough, by enough, enough.